Hey guys, it's Jules and welcome to Lupus Diaries. In this video or series, I will be sharing with you guys my experience and my story but I will be dropping some crucial information so that I know that you can understand me. Just a quick disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, I'm just a person who has this disease and has researched a lot about it. So what is SLE? SLE stands for Systemic Lupus Erythematosus. Systemic means it affects multiple organs of the body and erythematosus means reddening of the skin. It is an autoimmune disease which means it attacks both the good and the bad parts of the body. When I try to explain this to my friends, I always say, in short, bobo yung immune system ko. <laughs> different patients show different symptoms before we were tested positive for SLE. In my case, what happened was around 9 years ago, around May 29, 2011, I suddenly got a fever. At first, me and my family didn't think anything about it, but the next night, I suddenly got shivers. I was shivering so badly that the next morning, we went to the ER. So in the ER, they took my blood and got it tested, and when we got the results back, it showed that I had a really low platelet count. I wasn't admitted then, so when we went home, I still had a fever for a few more days. Then on June 2, they finally admitted me to the hospital. The reason for that was my fever was not going away and my rashes started showing. Then I got tested for dengue, malaria, typhoid, salmonella, and a lot of other diseases in which all of them I got negative. For several days, they didn't know what was wrong with me. A lot of doctors came and went and a lot of tests were done. But then my butterfly rash came out. I was so lucky that it came out because when the doctors saw it, they tested me for lupus right away. I learned from my mom that there was a long checklist full of symptoms and tests and if you got at least seven of them positive, it means that you have lupus. I never learned what I got but my mom actually documented everything that happened during the first stages of my lupus and she wrote everything down on paper. So this is the paper and documentation that my mom made. It says here that I stayed in the hospital for 14 days that I had a butterfly rash, lymph nodes on my neck and armpit, low white blood cells and platelet, continuous high fever, normal chromic anemia, which means my blood cells, red blood cells are low, and then I had no appetite. In the hospital, I only ate Estrell's caramel cake and Nestle strawberry yogurt drink. Those are the only two things that I wanted to eat. Hey guys, it's Editing Jules and I wanted to add something to the story real quick. When I didn't want to eat anything, they actually asked me if I wanted to eat from the restaurants near the hospital and I said no. When I got discharged, I regretted it so badly. Imagine all the food I could have eaten. Ugh. Anyway, back to the video. I missed the first week of my first year high school classes because I still had to stay at home after I was discharged from the hospital. I remember when I was at home, I wasn't allowed to do much but lie down and I'm very thankful for my family because they took care of me. Researchers still haven't found the cause to SLE which means no cause equals no cure. But of course, I was put on maintenance medication. I was given aspirin, prednisone, and plaquenil, which is currently going out of stock because of all the people hoarding due to the coronavirus pandemic. So please stop hoarding guys, let the professionals do their work, and stop self-medicating. Moving on, in addition to those medications, I was also told to stay away from three S's. Sun, stress, and salty food believed to have links to genetics, environmental triggers like UV rays, viruses, certain medications, physical or emotional stress, and trauma. 
It is also believed to link to one's sex because it affects more women than men and it is frequently seen during the reproductive stage which leads to the speculation that it could be related to the hormone estrogen. Aside from that, I was also asked to do a monthly checkup complete with laboratory tests which are usually CBC or complete blood count and urinalysis. But every quarter, we do tests for my other organs like my liver, kidney, etc. There are also these things called glucose flares. It is where our symptoms get so much worse. Flares also different from patient to patient. In my case, I am very thankful that I have mild glucose flares. When I flare up, my cheeks turn red, my finger joints get painful, and my white blood cell really goes low in count. I have a lot of people asking me why I'm so red all the time. Other lupus patients get really bad joint pains that they can't walk, their organs fail, and they get hospitalized. I am so, so thankful for my doctor. She has kept me in good condition for 9 years straight and I was constantly exposed to stress from school. So I think I've said too much in this video. This is only the first one and there are a lot more to come. Comment below if you have any questions about lupus and I will try to answer them the best I can. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get notified when the next Lupus Diaries video comes out. I hope you are all doing well, especially to my fellow lupus warriors. Don't lose hope. That's it. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to love you. Bye!